Hey, what's up? I'm Liz. This is Blitzy DIY, and these are my calipers. And you can probably already see there's a little problem with the screen. Now when I turn on, yeah, uh, I dropped these one night <laughs> when I was uh, obviously uh, measuring something uh, for 3D printing. I use these to figure out how big to make an enclosure for projects, something like that. You know, normal caliper things. But you can see now with the crack. It's kind of hard to see some of the decimal numbers, which can kind of make or break a model design. And I, I feel really conflicted about this because I think a lot of people would go, oh, you know, just get a new set of calipers. Uh, I, they're cheap enough. Like these were cheap. These were like 20 bucks. But I feel bad <laughs> because they're working and this is a lot of metal to just go, eh, I'm done with you. Uh, so. What I would like to do, and I don't know if this is possible, but what I would like to do is replace this screen. And so to see if that was remotely possible or see like what the insides look like, I tore it apart last night. I opened it up. So I'm going to kind of redo that process here with you to show you what I saw. So first of all, to get into the calipers, um, the screws are hidden on the back. Uh, there used to be something here. It was this measurement sticker thing that I, I don't think I ever referenced. Uh, so that, that, that's gone now. Um, and then to get in, you just need a small Phillips head screwdriver and you take off these screws that are nice and gunky from the adhesive that used to be there. And they're kind of these fun, bouncy screws. And then the last thing you take off is, um, I don't know what this part's called, but basically the thing that you use to slide calipers back and forth. It's held on with a little screw here. Take that off. So once you take that screw out, you can kind of pick up your calipers, or at least with this model, but I feel like they're an OEM model, so you might apply to your calipers as well. You can just kind of gently take that out and I would just lift this piece off so it doesn't fall or anything. And there you can see the, the kind of metal portion, the ruler. Um, and these screws here and this bigger screw, that affects the tension of the uh, caliper. So you don't need to take those out. I took them out a few times and I didn't need to. Uh, so yeah, just letting you know so you don't have to make the same mistakes I already have. So when you get into the actual caliper screen portion, you can see it's on right now and it thinks it's done something terrible. So so the thing with the calipers is it's uh, the way this, is, this entire thing is designed, it's like pressure fit. So when it's pushed against the caliper, the act I believe that the ruler portion is the actual caliper. You can see like stuff works more. Whereas if I take this off and I press like the on button, like nothing's working right now because there's no pressure fit. It's not that it's not working, it's just that it doesn't have that fit. So that's how this is functioning. If we turn it over. We have some more little screws. You can actually use the same screw head that you use for the others. That was like the nice thing about this. Disassembly and reassembly. I've taken it apart a few times now. I actually lost one of these screws last night, but I recently got this like magnet thing on a stick <laughs> and I was able to find it in my carpet. So I'll be able to put that screw back when I put this back together, if I can ever get this one out. So then after that, you can kind of lift out this board. This is the main circuit board. And so it's getting a little closer. So on the board, we have the uh, buttons. And I, I was surprised to see that they were labeled with the silk screen, but on off and then the measurement unit. And uh, to zero it out, you can zero it out. And I don't know if you can hear, but Winnie's, uh, Winnie's chatting with us right now, my cat Winnie. The battery, of course, sits in there, and you can see it down here. And on the back, this allows it to uh, slide and I believe read the kind of distance that it's gone. And the other important thing on the board that took me a while to figure out, uh, these little um, pads right here, that's how the screen is getting the data from the board. Uh, and it's interesting how it connects. It kind of threw me off a bit. Um, we'll get to that in a moment. We then have this rubber uh, insert that allows for the buttons to be pressed. Um, also helps with the press fitting of all the parts. We've got the battery here, which can push out nicely. 
And then we have our major problem, the screen, which we can take this part, which is surprisingly important. We'll get to it in a moment. But this is the screen. And you can see it's like more broken than it appears in the frame. That's all we need, right? Like it just needs to be replaced. Um, so one thing, at first when I took it apart, I couldn't figure out, uh, like, wait a minute, how is this talking to this? There's no connection. Well, there is. Uh, there are six, starting with four here and two there, I hope you can see them, uh, little pads on the screen. And the way that they're talking is through this. I thought at first that this was just uh, like a piece of rubber that was acting as a spacer because they like you have this piece of foam here and I thought that that's what it was and actually when I put it back together the first time I didn't put this in and it didn't work and the reason why is because this is actually allowing for the communication between the screen and the PCB if we put everything back in starting with the screen put in the rubber portion here get that all into the formed plastic you'll notice that there is this little kind of spacing here that's for this to pop in so that it perfectly lines up with the screen and the PCB so that the screen can receive the data it's easier said than done and I thought it was really odd when I when I figured out that that's what was actually allowing everything to communicate because it, it's rubber, right? It shouldn't be uh, conductive. But um, I posted up some pictures when I did the original teardown on Twitter and my other kind of social media things. And Micah, Scanline fame, responded uh, saying that these interconnects are actually called zebra strips, which is a great name for them. And that basically they're uh, consisting of alternating conducting and insulating rubber layers, which was great to learn uh, because now I understood and I had seen the same thing I have another LCD module I believe it's an it's it is an Adafruit model um, and I I opened it up just to see how the, their screen was integrated cause I wasn't sure if this was just something weird with uh, this one and it had the same thing it had the same zebra strips so basically any LCD module you get like the module itself is actually mainly the PCB that's controlling it and allowing you to write data to it Whereas this is kind of a proprietary board because it's only receiving certain amounts of data. Um, but all of them, the screens themselves, are receiving data from the module with these zebra strips. So that was really cool to see. Um, so now let's put this uh, back in. It would be helpful to insert the battery. With so basically, my idea is that if I can find a screen, an LCD screen, that's the same size as this one, and I can get it in there, it should technically work. I'll have to, have to make sure it's the, not only the same size, but that it's the same um, type. And I believe that this one is a uh, two row by 16 characters. But I need to kind of test a little bit more with that to make sure. Um, but I guess another reason why I'm making this video, not only to kind of show what I found and to kind of talk a little bit more about OEM calipers, because I feel like most people who do this kind of like, these kind of projects, maker projects, or whatever you want to call them, I always feel weird using the word maker, but anyway, another story for another day. Um, <laughs> I feel like most people have these, and I'm, so it's just, I always find it more interesting to learn how stuff works and looks inside. So, thought I'd share that, but also, my other reasoning is that I really, I'm curious if anyone knows um, where I could maybe get one of these screens. <laughs> if someone is already aware of maybe the supply chain of that, maybe they can let me know. Or, um, or and it doesn't have to be just a screen, just any LCD mod module uh, or breakout that has the same kind of screen. If you could let me know, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, I am going to be making some stickers soon. I would totally send you a sticker if you point me in the right direction. Maybe that will swing. I mean, people love stickers, right? Um, but yeah, it's good. And, but then I figure too, if I could find a screen that at least works, 
with the board and gets the data out, I could always like wor um, expand this display a bit um, because it's not like anything's blocking it or that it's nested. It's just sitting in there. So I could always maybe mod the casing. Um, that could work as well. And I, I know it, this seems like so much work <laughs> compared to just buying a set of calipers, but like, as I said, it's just a lot of metal. It's just a lot of metal to discard. And they're still working. Like, I'm still going to use them even as they are right now with the broken screen. Because, as you saw, it's just a couple decimal numbers that are a little iffy. Um, and I can always kind of, I can kind of get around that. So, uh, but yeah, it's going to do for this video. Just a quick kind of tear down and chat through uh, digital calipers and LCD screens and all sorts of fun stuff. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, consider subscribing more content like this. Let me know down in the comments if you have any leads for me to follow. Uh, until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY. Bye.